Well, my friends, how are you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of The Palermo Problem. Today is quarter final day in the cup and that's what we're going to be getting to. We're only going to be doing a one game episode because there's lots of transfer talk that I want to talk about in today's episode. Uh, if you missed last episode though, that's linked above right now, my friends, and uh, be sure to go and watch that and get caught up. Uh, we played one game between last episode and this one. We're going to go over that. We've got lots of stuff to talk about, but uh, yeah, a big, big episode, a big, big day in the series once again. Okay, so before we play the quarterfinal, I just want to talk transfers. Um, so, there have been some players leaving the football club, and there could be some potential players joining. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to show you the players that I'm bidding on and trying to bring into the football club just yet. I think what I'll do is I will do the outs before the game, and then if those players do sign, then I will do it after the game. I'll show you the players that have come in. Basically, they're going to be sort of replacements for the players that have left but uh, the first one that has left the football club is that of Ahmed Hassan obviously this is well documented the last couple of episodes I've been talking about him potentially leaving the football club um, so we didn't get the money we wanted for him we actually probably um, we let him go for a lot less than we maybe should have but I have engineered good clauses into the deal so uh, he's gone for an initial four and a half million um, but it can go up to um, five and a half after he makes 50 appearances but I've added that we will get 50% of any profit made on a future sale so if they were to sell him you know for 20 million we get 10 million pound of that money and I think that that is a really 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 good thing to stick in the clause uh, you know you know, in this sale of a player who has still got a you know fair amount to grow, and you have to remember as well, in the future was wanted by big clubs like Barcelona, your Man United, when we were bidding for him. So you never know if he ends up going, you know, to this club has a really really good time of it over a couple of years. They get sold on for mega money. We are going to win as a result of it, and it also means that we get a very unhappy player out of the football club, and um, you know, one that just wasn't really good enough for us anyway. So I think we've actually done all right. You know, it's not the most money initially. Um, we were really struggling to get anywhere near what, you know, he was worth. But uh, I think we've done okay. Um, Rodolfo Jose is a youngster. He's gone out on loan to Sevilla for the rest of the season. And it does make me think that maybe he's a bit better than I assumed he was. But because of him being, you know, one of those foreign players, um, and we only get sort of like one a season, I believe it is, uh, I decided to let him go out on loan. And then uh, we'll bring him back next year and see what happens with him. He's out on loan for the rest of the season. And the last one is that of Luca Ranieri. I had spoke about this player potentially leaving the football club last episode, and he has done so. He's gone to Sassuolo for £5 million, which is a huge, huge you know, profit on the 500k that we played for him. Um, relatively inconsistent player. Kind of gets caught out a fair amount. And uh, yeah, I just feel like there's probably better players out there. Layson has been very, very good this season. I think that we can make do with Buta as a backup left-sided, you know, left-back. Um, and we can go after a sort of another backup left back in the summer. We need a backup right back. It really, the summer is going to be about strength in depth. I think that the first team is there or thereabouts. I still think we need some additions, um, but um, yeah, I think that we're looking okay. So they're the sales. We've made a, a good little bit of money there, ladies and gents. So, you know, like we have actually got £8.6 million pound now to spend, a little bit of wages. And so, um, yeah, I've got some bids in place. I'm not going to show you them yet. I'm going to see if they actually manage to finalise because there are other clubs going after the players that we're interested in. But um, let's get to the cup. Oh, no, let's not. Let's do this first. Um, so we played that one game, ladies and gents. It was against Bologna. And as you can see, they've upset the odds again and got a result against us. So, yeah, a 1-1 one -one draw. It is what it is. Really, in the grand scheme of things, it's not the worst result. Obviously, Bologna, as we all know, are having a really good season in seventh position. So... Yeah, it's probably not the worst point, but it does mean we're now three points off of the top place because all the teams above us got good results. But um, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's still there. Do you know what I mean? 22 games. We've still got plenty of football to play, 16 games. As long as we really are competitive against the teams above us, I think we'll be all right. I think we're going to have a good season. Like I said last episode, we're a consistently, you know, we're consistently now like a top six team, in my opinion. It's just... We now need the financial backing from the board to go on to the next level. That's really, realistically, where I think we are at. But we're going to get into today's episode now. Remember, quarterfinals, the games come to you in their entirety, ladies and gents. And uh, we're taking this very, very seriously. Um, a, few, a few little rotated... Um, 
players coming into the team for different reasons. Um, you will see that there's no Cruz. He is suspended because he picked up a yellow against Bologna. It's just like the geezer can't stay in the team consistently at the moment. And uh, we are obviously changing the goalkeeper because uh, I have been given the youngster the chance in the cup. He has played every single game to this point. And uh, even though it's Bologna, I don't think it would be fair to drop him uh, for this game. So we are going to go with uh, uh, Musumeki in goal, Akadi and Layson at wing-back, Harwood Bellis and Gozzi at centre-back, uh, Renocchia Scandroglio in the midfield. We're going to go Lacera Borencia on the wings, Fagioli through the middle, and Haaland up top. It's a very good team. I, I think this team is good enough to beat Bologna on its day. But um, as we know, they've been a bit of a bogey team this season. Okay, here we go. Big game. I'm not confident. I'm going to throw it out there. Not confident. I know I might see me, but this team hate us this year. They hate us, ladies and gents. They just will not lose against us. And we're struggling to score goals as well at the minute. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm just not confident at the minute. I know this is like our competition. But this season, I just don't know anymore. <laughs> I really just don't know. So we're going to wait and see what happens in this quarterfinal game. Coming to you in its entirety, as you all well know at this point. But um, early stages suggest that we're playing all right. A couple of shots, good possession. Um, long may it continue for the rest of the game. But we have to get a goal. As a ball comes in from Bologna, it's headed out. We dealt with it quite nicely. Gozzi, good win from you. Now Ranocchia into Barencia. He's going to have space to stretch his legs. He needs to just keep going. Come on, Harlan, get in that box. He's done well. And I think there's going to be a penalty. Is he going to give that as a penalty? Is he going to give that as a pen? He's going to do all that VAR bollocks that we've got to sit and watch. And then he'll come out and he'll just point towards the spot. It happens every time. It never goes the other way. It really never, ever goes the other way. So I'm pretty confident we've got a penalty here. There you go. I told you he'd point to the spot, didn't I? And it is going to be Harland. He is our penalty taker. Come on, Harland. Put us 1-0 to the good inside 15 minutes. That would be bloody amazing. And he does. He always goes that side and he always goes for that corner. You would think the keepers would work it out. That's his 12th of the season. Thank you, Harland. Where would we be without Harland's goals? Honestly, ladies and gents, I do not know. But there is a throw-in now to Bologna. We've given him way too much space there. Oh, and that header goes very, very close. But, uh, yeah, we did. We gave him too much space. Now we're going to try and play out from the black. And um, that's good. That's good. That's very good. Akadi is going to come forward. He's been given a lot of space here, Akadi. Get a ball in. No, instead he goes Lacera. Oh, that was a good effort. That was a very good effort. I would have liked to have seen an early ball in the box, personally. But uh, instead, we get a lovely little shot from Lacera, who, for me, this season, has been worth his weight in gold. He has just been money over Virginius this year. And you know what? There's one, there's one piece of advice I can give anybody that plays football manager. Ignore those scout reports sometimes. Just take a look at a player, look at his attributes, and make your own mind up. Virginius' attributes are head and shoulders above Lacera, but Virginius' this season has done nothing compared to what Lacera has managed to achieve. So just shows you sometimes, ignore what the coaches say. You know, like Acardi, yeah, all right, Acardi's getting to that point where he is starting to get unlocked by the better players, but... You know, he's, they say he's a Serie B player. He consistently does it at this level. So, you know, just trust your instincts as this game is petering along at 1-0. And uh, we've managed to keep Bologna pretty quiet in this first half. But they're a second half team, I've, uh, I've noticed. We're just going to tell the players to prove a point. Barencia's fitness, not amazing. Keep an eye on on that he might have to make way at some point but the whole team is playing pretty well at this point but we do as i've already said love this competition we really do we've won it the last two years undefeated in it in 10 games so uh yeah i'm always I'm, I, the weird thing about this competition is every game i go in i'm not confident of like Coming out with a win, but we just keep grinding. Scandroglio. Oh, yes. 2-0. A lovely cushion. And it's Haaland again. The two dream players for me. Scandroglio and Haaland. Just unbelievable, the pair of them this year. That's 2-0. That's comfort. That is comfort. Um, you're probably seeing all the other results coming through at the moment. 
um, ladies and gents. Uh, Juve winning. I think Lazio are winning and Inter are currently 2-2 with Cagliari, I believe it is, or Genoa, one of the two. So that's interesting. What a ball. Oh, my God. What a ball from Scandroglio that was. Phenomenal. Absolutely mashed them. Corner. It's a really good corner. Shame no one got on the end of it. And I think I am going to make a change. Brentsy is going to make way. He's had an all right game, Brentsy, actually. But I'm going to bring Booter on just for, you know, energy's sake. And Booter, slightly more defensive player. Um... But yeah, everyone's playing well. It's actually really hard to make substitutions in this one because you don't want to make those subs and upset the balance. That's something that, you know, you, you, you really can do. And I'm one of those people as well. I make subs for the sake of making subs in some games. As Lacer oh, Lacera read that well and then his first touch has completely let him down. Let Jawara come forward. But uh, oh, he's, he's been done. He's been sat down as well. But that's good from Akadi to win that ball. Shame we just kind of got rid of the football there, though. Uh, but Lacera wins again. Akadi, if you're out wider, lad, then you get to deal with that. What on earth? This this looks like it's going to go the way of Bologna, and then we do well, and then that's beautiful from Harland. Oh, lovely hold-up play. Booter now. Where are you going to go? Layson's there. Layson loves that overlap. He's going to... He's going to... He's going to... Oh, how has that not ended up as a goal? How on earth has that not ended up in the back of the net as a goal? <laughs> Lucera picking out the goal kick as well. I feel Bologna are a bit shaken. They're trying to rush. Uh, but, God, he gets done. He's being caught by Jawara, who is going to come forward. He's on his own. Oh, and Akadi trying to get back. is going to give away a penalty. Please don't say we got to see the VAR. No, there was no need for that. And he is going to give that penalty away. And uh, Musumeki, it's time to make yourself a hero and save this penalty, lad. Otherwise, we're going to have a very shaky last 22 minutes. Of course we are. There was me saying Bologna looked nervous, and then uh, they go and do that to us. Uh, yes. They just won't be beaten. Fagioli. What an awful game that you're having all of a sudden. I didn't even notice that. Um, we're going to bring Meyer on in place of him. I didn't even see him having a bad game. But yeah, he has had a horrific game by his standards this season. He's actually been one of the better players for us. Um, we are going to deal with Rabbi because this guy has just been absolutely on a tear against us this year. Escandroglio puts a free kick in and Lacera is straight at the goalkeeper. Oh, well, that's a chance. And they're going to try and get on it quick as Akadi brings that down. He's going to play that ball. What a touch from Lacera. And is that going to be a penalty or is that a free kick? I'm not sure if that was in or out. We actually need VAR this time. Be interesting to see what he's going to give here. Um, was that just outside? I feel like it was just outside. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be a free kick, is it? It's going to be a free kick. He looks like he's going to be giving Viola a card. This is a lot of fannying around. Come on, ref, run across, mate. You're, you're actually wasting time yourself here. You're going to have to add all this on at the end, and it's going to be your fault. Come on. Get on with it. Scandroglio, though. Free kick. Ball in. It was a great ball, and it's headed over the bar. Thing is, with a bloody Scandroglio, a free kick's as good as a penalty sometimes. It really is. He's that bloody good at them. Um, I'm just going to close Mensa down at left back. Oh, and we might have a Bologna highlight as they're on the football. And... Uh, Yes, if we throw away a 2-0 lead, I will not be best pleased. But that's oh, that was a good clearance from Layson. It's a shame that Harlan couldn't get on the end of it. Ball coming in. Oh, it's done, dealt with well. We've headed it out. Come on, win this, win this, win this. Well done, well done. Nice, Maya. Ball over the top. It's Harlan. Can he finish? Oh, <laughs> I thought that was in. I thought it was in. Usually when he takes it there, the keeper, he's not going to stand a chance, but... Oh, it goes wide. It's agonisingly wide as well. Harland's got a brace. I can't remember the last time Harland got more than one in a game. I really can't. Oh, God. Come on. I'm so nervous. 
I'm so, so nervous. Going Droglio, Maya. Oh, we've got space. Akadi, get a ball in. He does. Oh, Buta finishes it. Buta finishes it. And finally, we get one over on this horrible team this season. Honestly, I hate the bloody sight of Bologna at the moment. But 3-1, get in there. Oh, lovely job. We, oh, we're going to be in the next round. Um, we're coming forward again. Lacera. Driving, driving, brilliant, brilliant. Oh, oh, that is that is sensational. That is sensational from the Sarah. Unbelievable. What a little player, man. What a little player. Why did I ignore him? Why didn't I just continue to develop him? Ah, 4 1. Get in, get in. Oh, bollocks. Um, so, yeah, you probably noticed that during the course of that game, the camera cut out. Yeah, I'd recorded uh, for two, uh, but basically I'd left too many things on the memory card and it cut out. So apologies for that. But anyway, we are going to crack on now uh, with a bit more stuff, ladies and gents. I'm just going to forward the game uh, a little bit, see if these transfers that I've been making uh, come off. And if they do, I'll introduce you to a couple of new signings before we potentially talk about what we're doing next episode. So uh, yeah, in, in a blink of an eye, I'll be right back. But before we deal with the transfers, we actually have the semi-final to draw. So let's do the semi-final and then, yeah, then we'll get to those transfers, hopefully. But uh, it's Inter, Lazio, Juve. Um, whatever happens, hardest semi-final probably we've had um, since going for the cup, in, I would imagine. I really do. I can't remember who the last couple of semi-finals were. But uh, anyway, let's draw the teams, uh, shall we? So Lazio are going to be up against... Into Milan. So we've got Juve over two legs in the semi-final. Um, <laughs> bloody hell, that's going to be hard. That is going to be really hard. But um, anything's possible in this competition, uh, as we all bloody know. Okay, so transfers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we've got two new additions to the football club and one going out. Um, it's not full-time going out, but it's still someone exiting the football club. And it is uh, Yuri Nemec. Um, it might come as a bit of a surprise, but last episode I did mention that he wanted to go out on loan. And so I've allowed him to do so. Um, he was really kicking off about it. And I just don't want unhappy players at the football club. So Yuri Nemec's gone out on loan um, because I still feel like Nemec has got loads of potential. I really do. Um, but he needs football. He needs first-team football and he's just not getting it. So uh, we've let him go on loan to Spol, they're going to play the entire of his wages um, and a fee as well uh, during the course of it, we're going to get sort of like 500k in money um, so I think that it's, I think it's a really good return um, for sort of like their investment and uh, a good return for us because he's going to get developed so that's the player going out and then we've had two players coming in, um, we've bought a centre back to replace Hassan and then we bought a striker that basically I couldn't not sign for the money that he was essentially there for. Um, he's good enough to be Harland's replacement if Harland eventually leaves. So, yeah, it had to be done. But anyway, first, I'm going to introduce you to the centre-back, and it's Jorn Hedegaard. Um, as we can all see, a top player. He's Serie A ready. Like, he can literally step into the team. He sort of makes him A, better than Hassan, and on the same level as bloody, um, you know, Gozzi and Harwood Bellis, which is just exactly what we needed. He's cost us no money whatsoever. 1.9 million. Uh, could go up to about 2.5, I think it is. Um, it's uh, it, For me, it's just a really good deal. Joins us uh, from Norseland, and uh, yeah, 22 years of age. Definitely one that can uh, continue to grow as well, and I think we're looking at the attributes he is a uh, he is a phenomenal looking talent and uh, the other one ladies and gents that we brought in is brian castillo he's coming for an initial four and a half million um with appearances and goals it can go up to about 11 million um so yeah it's a lot of money but as you can see he's worth 26 million already and if we're looking at him he's good isn't he he's good he comes in from river platte and, uh, yeah, if he makes five appearances for the international team, though, he gets a wage rise up to, like, 75 grand a week, which is a little concerning. He has a minimum free release clause of 55 million. So, yes, it's a minimum free release clause, but that is a that is a sort of, that's a safety one. At the end of the day, someone pays 55 million, look at the amount of money we're making on the player. You know, we're making 50 million pounds. It's a massive, massive, you know, improvement on money. They, we, they've lot, they've made a loss. All right, they, they might not if he ends up being really, really good for us, but they've actually made a loss. But look at this. 
how can you not sign him? How could I not? How could I just could I not sign him, ladies and gents? Had to be done. It's another striker, I know, but it's a striker that I feel like we definitely need because if Haaland does eventually leave in the summer, um, we've already got his replacement and he's going to get some football um, you know, for the rest of the year with the club. He's really going to get to like bed in and um, hopefully he's going to be pretty, pretty decent for us. So yeah, that brings us to the end of today's episode, ladies and gents. And I think it was a really good episode, actually. We got to talk transfers, which we don't get to do very often uh, where this is concerned, and a huge 4-1 win against Bologna, even if my face cam did go off during the course of it. But uh, I can only apologise for that. Now, we will be back for the first leg of the semi-final, ladies and gents. Um... And uh, I think that will be a one-game episode as well. And then after that, we'll do the tie in the Europa League. So you're not going to see any Serie A football for a little while. I hope that's not too much of a problem. Um, but the cup competitions have kind of got a... Um, they're kind of going to take over for the next few episodes, unfortunately. But uh, any of the big games in the league, then I think I'll definitely have to bring them to you. But if you're actually looking at that, there's not much football left to play, is there? It's a very, very interesting time. Nothing's changed as far as this is concerned, because obviously we haven't played any league football in today's episode. But um, we've got a couple of big games uh, coming up. Every game's a big game when you're going after the title, in my opinion. But Brasier and Perugia are up next before we come back for Juve. So um, just keep everything crossed that we can get the wins we need. So there you have it, my friends. We're done and dusted for another episode of the Palermo Problem. Uh, pretty decent stuff today. Really, really happy with that quarterfinal win. Um, we continue to just grind this cup competition out, don't we? We're, we're fantastic in it. And I'm really happy that we got one over on Bologna. Of bloody eventually this season hope let me know what you make of those signings uh, let me know what you make of the transfer business you know would you have sold those players would you have been happy to let them go for the money i have um you know and would you have spent the money the way i have as well but uh i'm done and dusted do all the usual subscribe like hit the bell notification button to never miss an episode you find all my socials in the discord in the subscription box as always but until next time my friends you're all legends and i'll see you all real real soon oh, yeah.